Hello, and welcome to C++ Weekly. I'm your host, Jason Turner. I am an independent contractor and trainer. This episode is going to be a little different from usual. This episode is going to be a high-level overview of computer architecture. I am definitely going to be glossing over some details, and I am going to be simplifying some things. But I wanted to make this presentation of uh, very simply how a computer works and how things have changed or not changed since the beginning of computers. And uh, this episode is being recorded for my grandpa's 90th birthday, who I know listens to this show. Fundamentally, computers have not changed since they were first specified in the 1940s by physicist John von Neumann who came up with the von Neumann architecture. Effectively, in the von Neumann architecture, which is very simple, and I believe deliberately so, as it is a model that has withstood the test of time, you have simply an input device that is feeding information into a central processing unit. The central processing unit has access to some amount of memory, and you have some output devices that that central processing unit can communicate with. I'm going to relate this information back to both the Commodore 64 and a modern cell phone, which you may be actually watching this video on right now. So, at the most basic level, your computer has a CPU. That's also known as the central processing unit, which we just looked at in the von Neumann architecture. This CPU coordinates the operation of the computer. And in a Commodore 64, we can see that it is right here. It is a distinct chip that you can easily identify. And this is true on a modern desktop computer or laptop computer as well but it may or may not be as obvious on something that is as tightly integrated as a cell phone. The CPU has no real intelligence of its own. All it does is exactly what the programmer tells it to do. So your computer also has a memory, such as uh, these chips here on the Commodore's motherboard, and some kind of a storage device like this floppy drive or a SD card on a cell phone, perhaps, or inside your camera. A camera is also a miniature computer, along with input and output devices. On the Commodore 64, an in input device was the keyboard, as well as a joystick or other possible things, but the keyboard is what it came with. And the output device was the TV. Now, on a smartphone, you have integrated your input and output devices into the touchscreen. So you've got your touchscreen that you tap on as an input, and it can display the results back to you on the same exact panel. So when you turn your computer on, the CPU starts up, and it immediately goes to some part of memory and begins executing whatever the instructions were that the programmer told it to execute. What part of memory it goes to is defined by the CPU itself. So when the designers created the CPU, they said when the CPU turns on, it's first going to go look at memory address 0 or memory address 100, which brings us back a step to something I have not yet mentioned, that the memory that the computer can access, these chips on the Commodore 64's motherboard, actually have distinct addresses. So the CPU can say, I want to access the memory at address 0, and then it gets that memory back and it executes it. So the kinds of operations that a CPU might perform are actually very, very simple. They uh, are, are fundamental, if you will. They are things like access memory, write to memory, add, divide, multiply, subtract, very, very basic operations. So a very simple program on our Commodore 64 might look something like this. Our program has only four operations that it's going to perform. The first operation is to check to see if the memory address value at 197 is greater than zero. If it is, then it's going to jump to address location number two. If it is not, then it'll execute address 1. And address 1 says simply, go back to 0. 
So it is going to keep looping between 0 and 1 until it has detected a change at memory address 197. Now when it does detect this change at 197, it will jump down to location number 2, which says set the value at address 53280 to the value 3. And then it'll immediately execute the instruction at address number 3, which tells it to jump back up to 0. So this is a very simple for instruction program that is simply sitting here and waiting to see if anything has happened at address 197. And why did I pick address 197? That is how the CPU is able to talk to the keyboard. So the computer is sitting here constantly running in this busy loop waiting for someone to press a key. When someone presses a key, it is going to set address 53280. And I chose address 53280 because this is where the video display resides. So if someone presses a key, it jumps to location 2, and then it's going to set 53280 to 3, which means change the border color to the value represented by the number 3, which on the Commodore 64 means set the border color to cyan. And that would result in something that looks like this. So the computer is doing this over and over again in this simple loop, in this simple for instruction program that it has started up as soon as the computer was turned on. And it is actually able, the Commodore 64, to execute this program hundreds of thousands of times per second. And very much in the same way when you touch the touchscreen on your cell phone, an electrical signal is sent from the touchscreen to the CPU. The CPU responds to this, and it does whatever action it needs to be taken, such as launching the application that you tapped on, starting this video, pausing this video, whatever you will. So building on this very, very simple concept, of a CPU that has input and output devices and memory that it can access, and having effectively extremely simple operations that it can perform, very complicated programs can be created that can do things such as display web pages and communicate with the internet. The only real difference between a modern cell phone, like you may be watching this video on, and the Commodore 64 from more than 30 years ago, it ran at 1 million operations per second, effectively, and a modern computer has a speed that is at least a thousand times faster than that, probably a billion, two billion operations per second, plus it might even actually have multiple CPUs, but that's out of the scope of this particular episode. And a modern computer has thousands or millions of times the storage that the Commodore 64 has. So over the last 30 years, the main things that have changed is that we've been able to make these things smaller and smaller. By making them smaller, we've been able to fit more complexity into it, and we have been able to effectively do more things faster. So at its core, this is what this YouTube channel is about. I am demonstrating how to write programs in a modern high-level language, like C++, but in a way that you can reason about what the computer is actually doing with that code, showing the assembly language output, and showing programmers how to be aware of what the compiler is doing and how to write more efficient code. And more efficient code is important because the fewer times that it has to execute instructions to accomplish some task, the better battery life you're going to get on your cell phone, the cooler your cell phone's going to run, and the more responsive things will be. So thanks for joining me for this slightly unusual C++ weekly episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to subscribe, follow me on Twitter, and check out any of the links below.